Um, I apologize, the microphone of the speaker was turned off. Right now we'll have the opportunity to listen to the ideas and the projects and plans that investment groups have for the cl clubs that they are buying. As you know, there are a lot of uh, independent properties of multiple clubs in different markets. How do they interact with each other? How do they define the strategies uh, from season? Do they share resources? Do they share the experiences that have different markets so that they can help the gr group itself to be successful? This is a, a talk uh, that will be moderated by Luis Vicente, chairman of Apex Capital. We'll also have Zaliko Karatia, the uh, football CEO partner to uh, CEO S Football, Ignacio Berstein, president of Estrel Praia, and on Dansville, football CEO of 7-7 Partners. Now, the stage is yours, Luis Vicente. I welcome your guests to the floor, too. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and listening. Can you listen to me? Yes. For the, the ones that need uh, translation, I think there is some, some systems outside. So we have here an incredible group of people um, that are uh, big believers uh, on the concept of multi-club network, but also even in the case of Jelco, multi-sport network. <laughs> and also as well, same with Inacio, because you, you actually present in multiple sports. And um, so we have, a, you know, I think here a very interesting, you know, intense session. Now start with Gio. Uh, Thank you. So because you came from far Obrigado. away, so you came from Mexico. So I'll, I'll give you the, the, the first opportunity to talk. Um, so you you've been, you know, leading uh, quite an interesting, you know, group, you know, with investments in uh, in Mexico and in Spain. So what are the crossovers you see between, you know, your investment in Liga 2 in Spain with Leganes and also in Liga Expansión in Mexico with Cancun FC? Uh, thank you, Luis. It's a pleasure to be, to be here. Obrigado. Um, no, it's quite interesting. Obviously, there are two different, different markets. Um, second division, we, all our clubs are in second divisions. Um, second division is Mexico. Right now, you don't have promotion relegation. That obviously impacts the entire league. And uh, hopefully that will open soon because it doesn't make a lot of sense without promotion relegation, I think. But um, so it's a developing league that had a big change a few years ago. It's changing again in a few, in a few, um, well, actually in a few weeks because the new tournament there will have a new format. And uh, but right now it's a it's a it's a perfect moment to start a process. And uh, right now, so the obviously sporting results are important, but with no promotion relegation, there is not that much risk. So you can build something, which is what we are doing in, in Cancun. Second division Spain, obviously the investment was bigger. Right? There is more risk. It's a very competitive, very competitive league. We have some of the CEOs and, and owners here and um, more investment, more infrastructure. I think it's a very well run league. There is a big financial control. There is financial control also in Mexico. Uh, in second division, strong financial control, which is something that obviously American groups like. And, uh, and, and, and the dream of La Liga there, uh, it's, it's a bigger investment, it's a little bit more cash um, and uh, you know, operating expenses, but there is a big dream, which is, which is uh, going to La Liga. There is a big fan base, relatively big, we own Leganes, um, it's, it's not Real Madrid, but there is a fan base. And, um, and, and it's for sure in Madrid, it's for sure an, an, interesting, an interesting project. Obviously, if you see at the sporting level, there is a one tier down, I would say that probably in a pyramid, um, Leganes and second division Spain is quite high level, probably one tier or two tiers above Cancun. So in the sporting, it's not easy, but there are synergies that you can do with Leganes B and players in Spain. We haven't done yet, there is adaptation, but in a pyramid, I think there are, there are quite interesting um, synergies and sporting opportunities. And then commercial, we're talking about two very different clubs. 
and the ownership is, uh, is the same, so the ownership has to get the right vision for both and then um, work together, which is what we are trying to do. Oh, thank you. Um, I will uh, basically now uh, go to Jelko. So welcome as well, Jelko, here to our panel. Um, you're building uh, quite an interest in networks, so with investments, as I said, in multiple sports. You own the American Football you know, League in Europe. Um, so you are present in boxing, in MMA, in esports, in um, many, many interesting properties. But also, of course, you've been a strong investor in football, um, um, with with basically uh, a lot of investments in Central Europe. So, how has been your journey uh, so far in in football? And if you could tell a little bit the audience how you started and uh, and how the process and, and project yeah. are going. Um, I would say, first of all, it's hard work. Um, and then we started three and a half, four years ago um, with acquiring Berlin and then Klagenfurt. Uh, as you said, we started also in the fourth league in Berlin. We were in the second league, close to being relegated to the third league in Austria. And um, yes, and we started to work. And I think this is something that under, is underestimated in, in, in the, the business because it sounds always great. I just heard from you. Uh, you, do te you do tequila tastings in Cancun. Th this sounds really <laughs> impressive and nice, but at the end, when we started, I think you need one or two years to clean a lot of things up. Maybe this is the German mentality uh, to think that way, but uh, that's what we did, and we started from the very scratch. Um, now we are with Austria Klagenfurt in the first league for the third season. Uh, we are now number four in the, in the first league. Uh, um, in the meantime, we made it with Victoria Berlin to the third league, get relegated again uh, because we were not able to, to, to have the infrastructure that we needed. So we are building now again a solid base and then to try to go up in the third league. And in the meantime, we also invested in Croatia and the Shibenik, uh, um, not because we think the Croatian market is that big from the economic side that you can earn money from sponsorship and everything, but we think it's a like Portugal, it's, it's a great source market for, for great players. So, and if you do it the right way, and again, I'm coming back, uh, it's not about glamour, it's about hard work. So installing academy, installing good trainer stuff uh, uh, in these uh, in this club structures, I think this is what we're doing now for a year and uh, revitalizing a little bit uh, the whole area and then try to bring it up and to try to install, let's say, the um, points of touch points between the clubs. It sounds always easy, you know, it's, a, it's one owner, three clubs, they work together and the business is done. As we're talking with people and then working with people, you know, always you have a sports director in Shibenik, maybe he only speaks Croatian, so we have a language barrier, first of all, mentality barrier. Uh, so the one loves to eat sauerkraut in Germany and the other is more lamb in, in Croatia, so even that is a problem. Uh, to bring them together, and uh, that is one of the key points that we are now facing in order to install also people and management on a special management level, that they run the business properly in their countries, but at the same time are able um, to talk on the, on the level in order then to find the synergies and to work together to say, okay, this guy um, is not ready to play in the first league in Austria, give him a half a year in Schibenik or in Berlin and then bring him back. You know, you have to, uh, to, to escape from your own thinking. He's not worth playing in Austria at that moment. Send him away. No, don't send him away because maybe he's out of our academy. We invested three years in this kid and don't send him away. Give him a chance in Berlin or in Schibenik and then bring him back once he's ready to do so. And sounds easy. But this is the, the major and the master um, exercise piece that we have to, to solve. Thank you. Very exciting, you know, what you're doing. Uh, good morning, Nasio. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, you, you, you've you been, you know, doing, I'll say, an incredible journey as well as in a double role, actually. So as president of uh, Estoril, so in, in Portuguese league, uh, and also as CEO of Global Football Holdings. Um, which is a large, a large group, you know, with uh, um, David Blitzer. Um, so, can you tell us as well the journey of the group so far, and you know, mm -hmm. how, how is the current status of the multiple projects you have? Definitely. 
First of all, congratulations to La Liga and TFS organization for putting together this exciting event. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, happy to join my uh, panel colleagues. Um, our, our group of investors, we're talking about successful businessmen in the States, that they are convinced that there is lots of runway in European football. They're looking for upside and they see upside in European football. They believe that the multi-club network is the right model to capitalize on this opportunity. Now, was it uh, ROI ambition or was it uh, a fully fleshed business plan that got us here? Absolutely not. Um, our investors are passionate about sports. They love the game, they love football, they want to watch every single game of our teams. Uh, so what brought us here was passion, definitely. If you, if you allow me to, to, to step back four years ago, we established our holding, uh, GFH, and fast forward, today we control four clubs, and there are four other clubs where we utilize different vehicles and uh, a slightly different shareholder structure. So in our family, it's eight clubs, four sister clubs, and four relatives, as we call them. Now, effectively, what that means is that we have been acquiring one club every year. And to put that into perspective, every single acquisition, on average, meant that we would have to screen up to 10 clubs. DDs, due diligence, we would engage on three clubs per acquisition. So in four years, if you do the maths, simple maths, we've looked into 40 clubs in Europe and we've conducted 12 due diligences. Now, for an organization of our size, that's definitely lots of bandwidth to put on business development. We believe that now, for us at least, it's a time to pause and to put the focus on operating better the enterprise. Thank you, Nacional. And, and if I may just picking up one point that you just said is um, that's an important learning, right, that you have uh, basically verified, you know, and uh, how important it is now this focus on the operational efficiency, right, because when you grow too fast, then it's, um, it's sometimes difficult, right, to, to, to be focused on efficiency right across the full network. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think I just said it. So uh, for us, I mean, today, when opportunities come our way, we, we, we need to force because in the DNA of our, of our investors, they want to get big, right? <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, we, we, we need to, to continue to tell them, hey, we need to go back to the plan. And the plan for us now is definitely focus on operational excellence. And, uh, and yeah, we want to stay on, 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 on that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Gio, I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, again, you are a, a younger <laughs> network, uh, so as well, but uh, very ambitious as well. Um, what plans do you have now in terms, are you going to focus as well now on operational efficiency, so on economies of scale, or are you going to keep growing and investing further in uh, Definitely. It's not easy to run clubs. I mean, it's easy when you're outside and you can spot the mistakes. And, but when you're inside, it's not easy. You make a lot of mistakes. We made in one year. We didn't have a lot of experience running clubs. We had experience running other clubs in other sports, um, at least our CEO a lot. But then in, it's, it's not easy. You tend to see the good part and then you don't see the bad part. I mean, we made some big mistakes. So uh, and we are one year old, so definitely uh, we are focused on operating our, our clubs. And it's interesting because you get so many emails and messaging about people pitching your clubs, clubs, clubs. And it's like, we're a small group. <coughs> All our investors know personally um, the people running the club. We're kind of a family, um, even if we have a lot of investors with different tickets. And, uh, and it's not just, you know, we're not a big group that's just buying, buying, buying. Some of them are doing it, and uh, I, I don't know how. I mean, it's, it's not easy. Even with you, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a task. It's a challenge and if you want to do it properly. And um, you have to accept that you're going to make mistakes, learn from mistakes. In some places, like Cancun, it's easier. In Leganes, it's more difficult because there's a little bit more pressure. But, but we are focused on, we might buy smaller clubs. We also have other investments in smaller clubs. Not that our clubs are huge, 
but but um, we are focused on on perfecting the the, the opera perfecting getting better and improving the the operation of, of our two main clubs and and it takes time and uh, and it takes mistakes but we accept them and you learn as as well I mean if you keep learning that's the most important part yeah, fully agree fully agree very important uh, patience is a big uh, no of important course there, quality you, you discussed it yesterday Luis okay. about medium long term view yeah. when you buy a club and uh, whether you are so it's a 10 years, I mean, eight, 10 years process. It doesn't happen like this. Nothing happened like this. So it's, uh, it's about the vi vision and, uh, and uh, we are in that. Rome wasn't built in a day. You said it yesterday, it's my WhatsApp uh, quote. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's a good, a good learning. Jalko, <laughs> uh, I'll pass back to you. Um, can you, you, it's very interesting on, on the scope of uh, multi-club networks, you know, there is Pan-European, there is Pan-Global, there is uh, you know, more localized on the on the, the, the Latin world. You 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 seem to have focus on Central Europe. Of course, I know your own base is Munich and Hamburg. Um, you are you know of course Croatian roots as well uh, and German roots. So uh, why you f what what was the opportunity or the driver that you found around Central Europe? You know on setting your own plans and strategies. Okay. There is one business answer, and there is another answer. For example, um, Shibenik is, uh, my wife is also from Croatia, so, um, and we live in Germany, and Shibenik is only, only 100 kilometers away from her birthplace. Mm. So maybe I gave something back, you know, and there's now we have a reason to visit always a birth city and everything, so we came back. The other thing is, uh, uh, next to all things that we are doing, so we are, as I said, we are running also American Football League and stuff, but uh, I like to do things where I think that I'm comfortable with uh, well, that, that can that add some value uh, to things. So, <clears throat> to be honest, um, I was in Mexico, but that's it. So I think I can't add anything in, in Cancun or somewhere else, and uh, um, that's why I say, okay, visiting and being there <laughs> on holidays is great, but um, I don't understand maybe the mentality, and I think this is sometimes what's about. So we're talking a lot of business, we're talking about how to improve social media, how to improve sponsorship, everything. That's one thing. The other thing is when we're running uh, uh, soccer clubs, but also other sports, is for me the question, where is the next Luka Modric? So I'm coming from the other side. So I'm saying just, uh, if we want to be successful, you know, that's, that's our job. That, that's, um, that's what we do. And, uh, you say Roma was not built in one day or two days. Um, this is your quote. I'm saying the, the quote for our um, network is let the kids play. That's what I have experienced over the last time. We produce, don't misunderstand it, but we educate so much kids every day. We have in Germany five under 19 Bundesliga uh, leagues. So that means there are 100 teams playing Bundesliga. That means we are every year 1,000 players educated in academies go out. But the reality is 20, 25 of them be get contracts uh, in professional yeah. leagues. So, and not always the best one of them because you know you have to be lucky, the right agent, everything. So, and coming from the club perspective, so you invested five, six years into, this kids, into these kids and uh, educated them and then maybe one of them will make it. And this is not always the problem of the kids, it's the problem of our structure. So they come out, but maybe, as I know, can you imagine I was with 16, 17, I was 160 and 50 kilograms. So nobody would say this guy will ever be 185 and 90 kilograms. So, you know, there was so much uncertainty. So in this case, um, they wouldn't let me play or box somewhere because they would say the other one is better at the moment. So our point is, what I mentioned before is, let's create structures where we can let the kids play. So that's what I mean. If we have an eight-year-old year academy kid from Klagenfurt, he's not ready for the first team. Don't send him away if you think he can do it. So bring him somewhere else. And this is, if you own the structure, something you can do. If you depend on others in order to bring them to a partner club or somewhere else, or you have to, to, to ask for something, it's difficult. And that's why I'm saying, um, in all what we are doing is, the next Luka Modric, the next Arnautovic in, 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 in Austria, I don't know, Matthäus in Germany. So this is what we're looking for. And 
from this kind of spirit that we have and asking is uh, what kind of structure I have to build within my network in order to produce this kit. So that's, at the end, easy explanation why we are doing and what we are doing. And as you said, it will take time. So you know, we built up the academies. We started three years ago in, in Austria. Now we are playing Bundesliga with the academies. The same in Berlin, the same in Schibening. So, and now we are starting to educate and to bring the first kids into the first teams. So, and we will see in two, three years from now, uh, if I'm right, with my thinking that the kids have to play and then they, they come back and we can make business with them together, or if I'm wrong and uh, the old system with one club system is the right thing, but I think uh, uh, the thinking about playing with the kids is the right thing. So you are already invited to Thinking Football Summit 2027. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and we can review how, how you go in your plan, but yeah. I'm sure it's, it's going to be right. Um, Inacio, go back to you. Um, and uh, I'm a big fan of Estoril, um, you know, on, on, on many things. Uh, I think first, I think you set quite a, a very good example in terms of your player development and, and how you are making <coughs> player transfers. <coughs> Sorry, almost... Uh, a re recurrent revenue you know, stream for, for your model. I know you operate also on, on you know, a very conservative budget and you know, a very efficient budget, which you know, it's a great, um, I think, example as well for many clubs, not just in Portugal, but elsewhere. C could you share some, some of the, the thinking behind the strategy and, and some of the experiences, good experiences you've been having in operating uh, you know, in these this conditions? Of course. So, um, Estoril, I mean, they, is the club that where I spend mm -hmm. most of the time. In fact, I have here some colleagues uh, that don't know when, when I am putting time on things that are not Estoril, they, they don't know what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, uh, Estoril is, 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 is our club. Um, so, first of all, uh, let me tell you that uh, I, I think that uh, being part of a, of a, of a multi-club network feels good, feels mm -hmm. good. Um, I think we, 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 we are taking, yes, a lot of um, uh, opportunities with the capabilities that the group can provide uh, to the clubs. That, as you said, I mean, when you have a, a, a tight, small PNL, uh, it seems that you know our numbers. So when we, you have roughly <laughs> 6 million euros of uh, operational revenues, to say that you're going to set up a data analytics team, probably you would tell me, hey, that's a stretch. Um, so that's when the group comes in, basically, and, and provides that capability. But, but I think even, even more interesting is, is when we identify what is it that we do extremely, extremely well at the different clubs. And at Estoril, there are a few things that we do well, and we'll talk about player development if you want. Um, and and uh, ensuring that that knowledge and expertise is then shared across the network that's crucial in order to get that uh, flywheel effect. Um, and that's something that we need to do more and more, right? Um, so yes, uh, on, on, on Estoril, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you two ways or two examples where, where I think that you can see that we are taking benefit of being part of a bigger thing, right? Um, so our scouting team, we have a great uh, scout and uh, they obviously plan ahead and whenever they want to propose a player to, to be considered for signing, they would come with a very detailed uh, qualitative assessment based on uh, games observations. Um, that was yesterday. Today, uh, we enrich that report and we add the data analytics evidence, which is using basically group methodology and group tools. And this is a way of how do we get better with limited resources being part of the network. The, the, the other example I would say, um, as, you, as, as you said and rightly so, we are very much focused on player development. So last summer, um, there was one uh, very talented player, 17 year old, Dutch uh, national under 18 in, 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 in Holland, playing for Ado Den Haag. And we saw that it was going to be difficult for him to take playing minutes uh, with the first team of Addo, uh, that's second division in, in, in the Netherlands. And the under 21s was not, the stimulus was not uh, uh, important and intense enough. So 
we brought him over. We talked obviously with his father and, and the player, and we brought him over to our under 23s. I mean, he played every, every game and uh, he had a great experience, uh, sports wise and personally. And uh, this summer we were, well, are you going back to Addo to play? And, and no, I mean, he, he's a stain. He's a stain and he's now part of our first team, 18 year old player, uh, one of the top, top projects that we have. And we have now a long term contract with him. So that's another way of how you see on, on player pathway how we leverage. Yeah. Uh, basically on resources from the group. Yeah. No, many congratulations, really, because uh, I think you are one of the leading examples, really, of that you don't need to be the club that spends more you know, or has more money than the others to effectively do a very good job. And so thanks also to your team. Congratulations to them. Um, uh, just picking up a point that you mentioned, um, and, and that's the real, of course, my unbelievable destination. So from a point of view, of location, you know, of you know the the, the the positioning it carries, but also a great destination as well for players and you know for the, the well-being of, of players and families. Uh, how important it is this for you uh, as well for the club uh, and for your thesis, you know, as well around you know the multi-club network. So super important. Um, first of all, I mean to start with, when I tell my wife and my kids that in the summertime they need to come over to Cascais, they come with a big <laughs> smile, and, and that helps me going through a transfer window e e a bit more easily. So, no, location is super important. Um, obviously, we we not only benefit from the fact that uh, Portuguese football, I think, big kudos for the development system in in, in, in Portugal. Uh, you are seeing how you guys manage to export talent and yes, I mean you have talent, but uh, but that's not good enough I mean you have a great development system. You have great competition format great coaching. You have world-class players um, That serve for the young and next generation uh, To basically try to, to aspire and try to imitate those paths um, so being in Portugal uh, For us, it's, it's it's critical. It's not that we are here just by coincidence. Um, Cascais, Estoril, uh, obviously we benefit from the fact of being nearby Lisbon. Uh, we have uh, two monsters of uh, European football and Portuguese football, Benfica and Sporting. These guys develop talent throughout their academy, more talent that they can grab. Um, so tactically also we take opportunities there. Um, and yes, I mean, to, to, to bring in players to Portugal to bring the players to Estoril, it's definitely, um, they understand as well what is our objective. So to these people that you were giving the congratulations, if you ask e anyone at Estoril, what is it that you do? They will say, they, we develop players. In fact, I mean, they will say, we sell players, but uh, <laughs> let's say develop players is a nicer, nicer way of saying that. And, and that focus to have the entire club focusing basically making sure that those young talented players can deliver to their dreams i mean that's pretty unique and and, and big congratulations and big thank you for them obrigado parabéns uh, to the keeper yeah. yeah very good portuguese <laughs> uh, gio i'll pass to you um so you 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 basically acquire and invest in a club that is one of the largest tourism destinations in the world so yep. I think everyone in the room knows Cancun yeah. and probably has visited Cancun. So one of the most connected destinations as well in the world. How important is this, you know, as well for you in your strategy? How, how this is important for your players? Absolutely. Um, and and uh, for your positioning, you know, as well. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's um, string a quote, it's freaking Cancun. I mean, it's uh, second, when we bought the second choice destination in the world, right now top five, 30 million people. Um, we're talking about the most connected city. If you join MLS and Liga Mekis, I think there are around 42 teams from 38 cities. 33 have direct flights daily to Cancun. Only Houston, our group is based in Houston, has like eight. Fastest growing city um, in Mexico and one of the fastest growing in Latin America, 40%. It's already more than a million people living there. Um, what happened between New York and Miami, the same happened between Mexico City and Cancun during COVID. So a lot of people from Mexico City moved to Cancun. So a lot of money moved to Cancun. Three out of the top five federal investments are in Cancun. 
So it's uh, pretty much crazy what's happening uh, in the growth of the city. And, uh, and that helps you a lot. Obviously, players, when they retire, they want to go to Cancun. You don't always want the players that you're retiring. We got one at 35 years old, which is an incredible talent, I mean, athlete, because he has the right mindset. Otherwise, uh, it might be a challenge. Um, but obviously, we, and it's the biggest Mexican registered brand in the world. So as you said, the first connection when you say Mexico in the world with registered brand used to be Corona. Right now, it's mm -hmm. the city of Cancun. Um, so it's a huge opportunity to build a brand from scratch because we are unique. We have a team that didn't even exist. So we built a team from scratch, which means that usually clubs have another problem. I mean, everybody knows from your city. I mean, in, in, all, in all cities, there are clubs. And you know, maybe you don't go to the stadium, you don't buy the jersey, but you know there is a club. In our case, when we bought the club, I took 100 taxis because I didn't have the, a car. And only four knew there was a team. Taxi drivers that should know that there is a team. 5%. So nobody knew it. And it gives you an incredible opportunity also to make mistakes, but to build a brand, which is way more than just football. We have the youngest executives, youngest coach, youngest sporting directors, um, you know, and uh, we are the youngest clubs in, in club in Mexico with the youngest fan base. We are integrating art, culture. We have a jacuzzi at the stadium. Where the jersey was made by local artists and got awarded the best design of the year. We are trying to build something different uh, because because of the location, because of Cancun, and because the possibility to build a brand that is not just football. And I think new generation like this, um, the, the, the stadium, um, we, are, we invested a lot to improve the experience. As I said, we are, uh, we are doing a tequila tasting, we have a barbershop on the field. So the idea is to go there and enjoy an experience. It's, uh, in, we, we grew up watching games just on TV and uh, speaking with my dad and friends. Right now, things are changing, especially in new generation. You don't want to sit and watch a game for 90 minutes. I don't do it. Maybe I'm hyperactive, but I spend time at the phone. I do other things. I speak. And the same is new generation. So we want to give them that opportunity in Cancun to live an experience. And, um, and obviously, you can do it because you are in Cancun. Obviously, in Leganes, it's, uh, it's completely different. Yeah. But you need to know, which is what you said, and the most important thing, the culture. And um, I, I couldn't run, I think, a club in other countries. I can't do it in Mexico because I, I, am, I'm, I understand the culture. And, but, but as you said, for example, in, in Germany, I, could I think I could never run a club in, in Germany because it's, uh, it's difficult. You really need to know the language, the culture, and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, but we are in that, and so you hopefully will be in first division first, and, and you can all come to Cancun um, to watch a game in our jacuzzi, guys. And, and so I, I think you're going to have a lot of emails after this <laughs> panel <laughs> <laughs> flowing around. Um, so uh, we we almost you know uh, reaching our time limit, and I, I want now to move into uh, what I consider, and I think everyone here in this panel as well consider very important, you know as well women's football um, and. Jalco, um, you, you, one of your investments has been in what is today one of the reference clubs, you know, in women's football, actually globally, right? Um, and, and it's still a club that is still uh, going up in the echelons of uh, German women's Bundesliga, but effectively built an incredible brand over, you know, uh, the last years, uh, which is Vittorio Berlin Frauen, exactly, mm, yeah. <laughs> so I pronounce it well. And um, again, everybody as well maybe has heard about Angel City. I always call Victoria Berlin the Angel City in Europe. So why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about that uh, incredible project? Yes, I think uh, it's obvious uh, that the women's football is growing uh, rapidly, much more than men's football um, overall. Also by, let's say, by regulations that you have to have women teams now inside your structure if you want to play, play in the Bundesliga or European competition. So um, this setting is made and uh, we, have to, we have to follow. But the question is, uh, do you just follow? Or do you think there is a really opportunity um, and, and you, can, you can do more with that? And uh, <clears throat> what happened in Berlin is uh, we sat together with uh, 10 really well-known uh, women and uh, we started Victoria Berlin, the project women's team. Um, yes, you said Angel City is Angel City for, let's say, a little bit more poor uh, uh, <laughs> Angel Cities. But uh, we started this and uh, really engaged women, national players, uh, 
Maria Höfel Riesch, Olympic winner, Franziska von Einzig, they were joining all this project, invested money in that. And the project is, at the end, from the sports side, to say in three, four years from now, we want to be with Victoria Berlin, which is the capital of Germany. We want to be in the first league in Germany. But not only playing in the first league, we want uh, equality, so we want uh, fair payments for the women. Uh, we want to have professional coaches like the man has as well. Uh, we want to have a proper supplier as the man have. And we don't want to be always, let's say, the last 10% of the men's team, and uh, if it would fit, uh, uh, take the jerseys of the men of the last season, so the last thinking. So, And what happens here is, for example, what happened is it's opposite now. The women started, although they are playing in the third league, they did the relegation about against HSV in the last season, and they had 5,000 people attending, paying tickets in the third league, Relegation and women, TV coverage, and right? TV national coverage, TV national TV coverage. TV coverage came in. So, and Nike stepped in as a supplier, and not because of the men, because of the women, and the men took Nike as well because mm. the opportunity was there. Indeed. So, um, I think uh, there is a big, big chance to do that, and this is something that we, before we maybe start with a fourth men team somewhere. Um, we will rather go that way that we're doing in Berlin, also in Klagenfurt and in Schibenik. We have a, now a third league team also in Klagenfurt in Austria, and we will start the same in Schibenik because uh, I really believe in that. Um, that uh, you know, there is a lot of talent also in the women's football. A lot of sponsors um, are only allowed to do sponsorships. Uh, meanwhile, if you also have. Uh, uh, a women team, so let's take this as an opportunity and not as a barrier somehow and develop that and uh, as I see maybe this year we will be, that's what I'm saying, but I believe that strongly in that and that's what we can prove next year is uh, that the women's team of Victoria Berlin will be promoted to the second league in Germany and because they're doing the right way and they can help the men business, uh, to be honest, in order to improve faster, right. because they can open some doors at the moment right. that the men can do. So besides inviting you for 27, 24 also on the book. 24, five, about, you know, a, yeah, a but, lot of uh, milestones. Uh, there is one thing that maybe you cannot say, but I can say, <laughs> I think you are one of the actual incredible examples that you have both the men and the women's team, right? In Victoria mm -hmm. Berlin. And actually the women's team has a much higher valuation you know, from a financial point of view than the men's oh. team, which is quite an interesting example, I think, and I think is an example that we're going to start to see much more. So we almost wrap up. I, I just wanted to go back to you, Inacio, and to Gio. Um, as to real women, I know that within the, the, the group there is some investments, you know, in US on NWSL. Is there something that you will consider, you know, is part of your thinking at the moment? It needs to be. I mean, I told you that uh, we have American investors, so you understand that obviously for them, uh, women's football is, is it's part of it. I mean, it's not uh, something, it's not an add-on, it's part of it. Uh, definitely, there are other clubs where we have our women's division way more developed, uh, be it in, in the States, be it in Copenhagen, be it in, in Holland, and definitely in Estoril now, it's, it's something that will get uh, support and effort. Absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic news. Uh, Gio, what yes. about you? If you invite me next year, I think we can. We will be able to speak also about our Cancun <laughs> women team. Um, we didn't even have a youth academy when we bought the club, zero. Mm -hmm. So um, we had just launched our first two clubs, one last year, now the under 18, under 20, under 18, and now our, our next big project is the women team. So we are, we are on that, and I think we will have it by, by next year. So, um, we actually did it on time, so perfect. <laughs> so I want to, first of all, thank our incredible panelists. I hope that this session was enlightening for all of you because I think there is at the moment sometimes a lot of controversy, you know, about, you know, uh, multi-club networks. Uh, I think it's important for all of you to listen from the ones that are leading these kind of projects. First of all, the real values, the long-term strategy, you know, uh, very important investment, you know, for the industry, and, uh, and also uh, very open 360, you know, not just on men, on women, which is also very important. Um, and so I'd like to ask you, please, you know, a round of applause for our panelists, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Yeah.
Ah, you want to take it? Ah, uh, oh, no, no, <laughs> uh, So, uh, I think, no. Gio, you wanted to offer your Cancun uh, shirt to the organization, right? Yeah. So, you really shirt. want to be invited for no. 24? Yeah, I did yeah. everything possible. <laughs> 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 Please invite me. <laughs> but no, but it's uh, so much jersey. No, thanks for the invitation. So, I just. Uh, yeah. Come with uh, me? No, no, no. Ah, no, come. Okay. Presentation. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's so slim, huh? Yeah? Do you like it's, it? It's slim. So ah, it's slim. Yeah. No, it's this side. It's this side. <laughs> it's my side. No, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a so Maya much. design. It's a Maya design. Local yes. artists, they made a Maya design. Let's go, or you want oh, yeah. to stay here until 24? No, uh, no, 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 I also no. have a flight in one hour. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay.